And we now move to open debate, uh, six minute speeches. I call on George Adam to be followed by Cara Hilton. Thank you, President Officer. I always welcome a debate in Scottish education and enjoy listening to colleagues' views on the challenges that we face ahead. However, currently we have not completed stage one on the Education and Culture Committee of the Higher Education Governance Bill. I will, of course, thoroughly examine all the written evidence and listen to any constructive suggestions. So at the moment, President Officer, this all seems a bit premature. But with that caveat in mind, I make the following comments. The Scottish no, I've got far too much to go through, uh, Ms. Smith. The Scottish Government has made it clear that the universities are and will remain autonomous bodies. Why would anyone want to take away that which is seen as fundamental to our universities' worldwide success? The aim of the Higher Education Governance Bill is to modernise, strengthen governance, ensuring that the principles of democracy and accountability are an integral part of the higher education sector. Ferdinand von, von Brundinski, Principal and Vice-Chancellor of Robert Gordon University and Chair of the Scottish Government's Review of Higher Education Governance, said earlier this year, Universi universities are autonomous bodies and should be but their autonomy should not shield them from the legitimate expectations that they engage with staff, students and external partners or that they need to behave in an accountable manner. I have still got quite a lot to go through as well. He added, none of this is about government control. None of our recommendations and indeed none of the proposed elements of the government's planned legislation would give any power to ministers to interfere in the running of institutions. The 2012 review is the foundation of the bill. With regards to any potential ONS reclassification of universities, I would like to say that this has been central to the Scottish Government's consideration throughout the development of the Bill. While providing evidence to the Scottish Parliament's Finance Committee, Scottish Government officials stated the following. We deem reclassification to be a low risk. However, if as a result of wider ONS review of universities there were any risk of reclassifications, ministers made it clear that that is not a policy goal. We would take that what measures were required to ensure the universities were not reclassified. However, if as a result of wider ONS review of universities. So the government has said there is no intention that this bill would lead to reclassification. Units in Scotland helpfully pointed out that the Education Committee in written evidence, universities have a range of income sources and the proposed bill will not impact on the balance of funding. The difference in borrowing powers was also said to be significant. Colleges, unlike universities, require government permission to borrow. There seems therefore no risk of real classification following the implementation of the bill. But it is my belief that the talk of ONS reclassification is taking us away from the more fundamental point of this debate. This is about ensuring that our higher education institutions have open, transparent and modern governments. Surely that is a good thing, presiding officer. I would argue that involving staff and students in the governance of their institutions, as was the view of the von Prondonsky review, would create an extremely positive and dynamic structure of culture of governance. As Mary Senior, UCU Scotland, said at the Education Culture Committee roundtable on the 6th of October, no one is questioning the Scottish universities are good. They are good. What we are saying is that they could be much better if staff, student and trade unions were fully involved in how they operate. It is my opinion that this creates a form of collective responsibility that means that decisions can be made by all representatives of the university community. I cannot see any negatives with this and that is why I support the elected chair of court or senate as a way forward. It also creates an openness that is not currently there. And NUS Scotland mentioned this in their briefing for the debate. They are concerned that there is a need for greater democratic culture of governing bodies. NUS Scotland states that while many student associations are able to take part in the university court meetings, many student representatives feel that these meetings act merely as a rubber stamp a rubber stamp exercise to validate decisions that have already been taken by the principal or at committee level. They believe that there is a need for greater transparency over decisions. In addition to a lack of participation in democratic culture on governing bodies, there is a distinct lack of transparency, they state, over governance decisions. They provide an example of this being investment discussions, decisions of universities and increasing principles pay packages of the institutions. Let's look at this further, presiding officer. Let's take 
the University of Edinburgh, although they're not alone in this with salaries. In 2005, 190 people had a salary between 70 and 189,000 pounds. In 2014, 440 people had a salary between 70 and 319,000, with the top salary being anywhere between 340 and 349. At this stage, I don't know how much the top salary is because it isn't actually clear from the information you can get. That doesn't mean that there isn't an answer to that question. It means that surely if we had the, the democracy within the universities, we'd have an opportunity to be able to see uh, what is actually available there. So, presiding officer, the Scottish Government provides £1 billion of public money in our higher education institutions. They do this because the educational future of our young people is important to us all. They do it because our world-leading universities give so much back Georgia, to our nation. Close, please. But we cannot stand by and admire this great buck and not move our universities on. It's time to make sure that we equip them for the 21st century. Thanks very much.